our new historical divide, BC and AC. The world before Corona and the world after. Here's the New York Times columnist Thomas Friedman's recent column title. The world is now divided before and after Corona. Friedman said in a column, We can't predict perfectly what will happen after Corona, but the world will be very different from what you've known so far. So will the world of business. Non-face-to-face -face consumption is a case in point. Experts assume that the keyword for future business is business that converges digitally. Business trends will accelerate toward digital, and businesses that are newly written in digital grammar will be noticed. Trend Watching, a trend analysis company, recently published a report titled Trend to Rise as a Coronavirus. Let's see a few of them. Number 1. Virtual Empirical Economy Experience economy is a generic term for recent trends in which consumers are not satisfied with the buy of buying and finishing products from brands and want to get a continuous experience. However, as consumers are focused online, there is no space for offline experiences, which is expected to be replaced by virtual experiences. A case in point is that the game, culture, sports, and tourism industries combine field trips through VR devices. Of course, possibilities are open to consumer goods and other service industries. Number 2. Next Generation E-Commerce As the older and mid-age generations get used to online shopping, online will become a daily shopping habit for all consumers. This could lead to a new form of e-commerce, as the current Amazon's approach of seeking the lowest cost is rather outdated for the younger generation. For example, a shop streaming provider that combines entertainment with streaming and shopping comes out and sells products. A can develop into a more immersive, participatory, social form. Number 3. The Era of Learning Online People are thinking about how to spend their time online more productively. Because of this, the demand for online platforms to connect experts and mentors will increase. A notable example of this is the recent collaboration of the language learning platform Duolingo with the game broadcasting platform Twitch. Users are able to learn foreign languages by chatting while watching game broadcasts. Number 4. Ideal Partner in the Virtual World People who are used to AI secretary and chatbots, such as Amazon Alexa and Apple Siri, can expect more humanity from them. This is because online has exploded in daily life. That's why companies need to set up personality and online marketing in order to have a lasting relationship with consumers. If your business is accelerating toward digital with a variety of faces after Corona, you'll need to accelerate it. The answer is clear. Digital transformation. Management consulting firm Immersion Group said, The Corona is like a wake-up call that reminds us how important digital transformation is in every touch of the business. This is a wake-up call for those who have been focusing only on their daily operations in front of them and making digital investments. But many traditional companies have already tried to push for DX for many years. In a 2018 Gartner survey, 67% of the 800 raised 43 CEOs in the world said, If we don't do remarkable digitalization by the year of 2020, we'll lose our competitive edge. So why doesn't it accelerate as much they try? At the end of 2018, a McKinsey survey found that 70% of companies fail digital transformation. We need to take this opportunity to check and improve the cause. Do you remember Newton's second law from school days? Acceleration is proportional to force and inversely proportional to mass. If the object is heavy even with the same force, the change in speed is not significant. The same is true of the acceleration of digital transformation. It's not just about giving strength. If your organization is heavy and your mind is stagnant, you won't see a significant change in speed. Let's look at examples of failure or success because of the size of your organization. First, GE's failure experience. We shouldn't try for short-term profit. G, an engine and machinery maker, was the epitome of digital transformation in 2016 to the point that the New York Times called it a 124-year-old software startup. It presented the concept of industrial internet which combines the internet of things with machinery equipment at industrial sites. And also launched credits as software platform for internal and external developers. It has recruited the group's software business and people, hired more than 6,000 new people, and established GE Digital. The plan was to create an industry standard internet OS, 
and generate more than $15 billion in software revenue by the year of 2020. However, GE Digital had to submit quarterly performance goals and was under performance pressure. It provides new value to customers through the Internet of Things and transforms itself into a software company started out as a vision. But in the end, how to make money right away became my biggest concern. They were busy providing solutions to their products, including jet engines, railways, and wind turbines, and ended up playing the role of development teams in their respective divisions. It is evaluated that digital transformation has not advanced beyond the stage of digital enablement, which applies new technologies to existing products. Inc., an internet media for small business, posted a comment as next. The real digital transformation is to rethink our current business model. It's not the process of adding technology to the current model. But most people choose the latter because it's so hard. Second, Ford's failure experience. Integrate with your core business. Ford is currently working on digital transformation, but he has also experienced failure. It was quite the opposite of G. It was a problem because it was not integrated with the core business. We are no longer an automaker, said CEO Mark Fields in 2016. We are a mobility company. And established a subsidiary called Ford Smart Mobility to study autonomous driving and car sharing. It gave them full autonomy, and thanks to this, they could spend a lot of money to acquire startups. The problem was that it was too independent to integrate with other businesses at all. It moved like a separate company, and it was located thousands of kilometers away from Michigan's headquarters in Silicon Valley. So there was little communication with the headquarters organization. Mark Field says smart mobility has failed to show a vision of how the technology being developed will be incorporated into the automotive business today. Meanwhile, stability issues such as transmission problems have been raised in other business sectors such as Ford's pickup truck, causing stock prices to plummet, eventually leading to Mark Field's dismissal. Ferb said, the Ford case was more of a pivot that changed the direction of the existing business than a digital transformation of the business. For digital transformation to succeed, its efforts must be properly integrated with other organizations. Third, the case of Domino's Pizza, the start of digital transformation should be the customer. In the mid-2000s, Domino's Pizzas were recognized as low-priced, tasteless pizzas. In 2008, it was the lowest in the U.S. Consumer Preference Survey. In order to break through the crisis, Domino's received honest feedback from customers online and posted it on the walls of the office. A taste like cardboard chewing, instant pizza is better. With the reflection of the customer's criticism, it turned around by changing recipes such as sauce and dough. Then Domino's has found out. Customers' consumption is rapidly moving online. This was when Domino's digital transformation began. But what's noteworthy is that Domino's was focused on what makes customers most annoyed the pizza order process. At that time, the way to order pizza was mainly by visiting the store or by phone. There was a website order, but it was very inconvenient because the customer had to go through 25 steps including login, topping choice, address entry, and payment. So Domino's focused on the technology to order pizza simply. It was the most uncomfortable spot for customers. It started moving the order process online and set a goal like this, it started moving the order process online and set goals like 1. Whatever pizza you order, the process has been reduced to less than 5 steps. 2. To order as usual, open the app and wait 10 seconds to get your order. 3. 15 services, including Twitter, Slack, Facebook Messenger, Amazon Echo, and automotive dashboards, will allow you to order emoticons by touch or voice. Domini's motto is to be an e-commerce company that happens to sell pizzas. The result is Domino anywhere platform that stores customers' taste, address, and payment information. Thanks to this, Domino's stock price from 2010 to 2017 rise 2,000% which was higher than Apple and Amazon Netflix, and has surpassed Pizza Hut to become the top seller in the world since 2018. More than 60% of their current sales come from digital channels rather than stores. It's because they've been digital transformation with a top priority on improving customer experience. Recently, he also started experimenting with drone, self-driving, and robot delivery. Ben Battis, founder of the digital marketing agency T3, told Digiday, an online media outlet. Most of the food industry's digital transformation is to introduce technology into areas of interest, such as payments and loyalty programs. 
and then they try to create a customer experience. Domino's, on the other hand, has built up all the technology and solutions on top of the customer experience of how to order and get pizza delivered in the most efficient way. Fourth, Netflix success story. The organization also needs to be changed accordingly. Although Netflix was originally a digital native, it went further than that and succeeded in digital transformation to the point of being called a cloud native. Cloud native is not simply moving software and applications to the cloud, but optimizing the entire design, deployment, deployment, and operation of services for cloud computing. Netflix moved its ID infrastructure from the data center to the cloud for seven years from 2009 to 2015. As the size of the service grows, the limitations of the traditional monolithic method of developing and managing the entire service in one month are revealed. It had to fix other related features on the code to fix one feature, so service improvements were slow, traffic was heavy, and it had to add hardware. So it introduced microservice architecture and MSA that builds web-based services on top of Amazon's cloud service AWS. It is a method that collects and attaches applications according to functions and attaches them as needed. So you don't need to repair the entire service. It can be modified and supplemented quickly. When traffic is heavy, hardware quotas automatically increase. But in the process, Netflix's biggest concern was to reconstruct the tissue together. MSA is a structure in which complete functions are combined to become a service. So it's hard to develop and manage microservices quickly in the traditional way that the development and operation teams work separately. That's why Netflix transforms services into hundreds of microservices, creating a DevOps approach that combines development and operations with one team. They've changed the way we organize and work as we move our services to the cloud. Yuli Izradilevsky, Vice President of the Cloud Division at Netflix, said. We've fundamentally changed the way we operate, rebuilding technology with cloud native. Teams have accelerated innovation by making independent decisions. Moving from the way you used to be a data center to AWS is just bringing back the challenges and limitations you've been through before. It means that organizations need to transform themselves into technology. To sum up, your business needs to step on the accelerator pedal of digital transformation, trying to survive the change that accelerates digitally after Corona. Please check at least for the following. 1. Is your digital transformation just to add technology for short-term profit? 2. Are you integrating it with your core business? 3. Is it focused on customer experience improvements? 4. Is your organization and the way of work changing? Thank you for watching this MBU video. It's a small knowledge that maybe use big for you. And I also hope you and your business overcome coronavirus successfully. Please subscribe and click like. It will give me a power to sustain this channel. Thank you.